So this is the problem that I am trying to solve today, and hopefully this can help you. We're taking this uh, VHS tape, you can see here, old school baby from way back, and how do you get it uh, digitized and specifically onto something like um, Google Photos, right? So uh, this was my challenge. In fact, I've got lots and lots of VHS tapes here. And so how do you do it? Um, obviously, there are uh, there's hardware that you can buy that can convert a VHS to a DVD. For example, this unit right here. Um, but if you're not interested in having a DVD, if you'd rather have it just digitized, and you, you can basically skip that uh, DVD process and just go directly from the VHS tape to uh, a file that's openable and transferable to uh, the cloud, right? In other words, it doesn't require DVD technology to play it back. Um, and also, um, an added benefit of not doing DVD first is then you'll have another problem to solve if you have it on DVD now and it's a finalized DVD, how can you actually rip that DVD onto your computer? That's a whole nother ball of wax. So I'm gonna show you what works for me. Um, obviously you need a DVD, or excuse me, a uh, VHS player. And I've actually got it hooked up to a little TV here so I can actually watch it on the big screen as it's being, as it's playing back, okay? So let me show you around the back, you'll need your TV and I've got the antenna, just a regular kind of antenna cable here, um, going into as the input, and then it's coming around the back of the DVD, and it is plugged in to, what is that? Very difficult to see back here. Okay, it says out to TV. All right, so I'm having a cable kind of going out to the TV so I can watch whatever is running on the VCR uh, on the TV. Now here, I've got my uh, RCA cables and that is uh, heading out as well. There's another set of plugs on the bottom that I don't need. So you want that to be running out. Okay, so basically it's gonna send the signal now to the end of the RCA cables. Sorry about that, let me get that in focus. To the RCA cables. And now the problem is how do you plug in these RCA cables to your, to your Mac, right? So that requires a little adapter here. And I will show you what I use here. So we'll, these are the ends of the RCA and you're gonna need a little device like this and I will as always put a link in the description below uh, It's some kind of online cheap brand. I think I spent like seven bucks on it or something like that So it's got the female ends for the RCA Cables so you just color code them like that if you have an uh, S video, I think that's what it's called um, you can plug that in and it basically um, allows you to plug this into your to your Mac and this thing does work on a Mac if you're doing it on a PC um, I will make a separate video on how you can make this work on a PC uh, but this just plugs into the back of your uh, Mac via USB just a regular USB so look, let's do that now, now if you've got an extender because on these Macs, I think it's kind of cumbersome to get back here. But if you've got an extension for USB, I don't recommend using that. Plug that in directly. Um, this piece also comes with an extension itself that does work. Um, but you don't want to plug it into any third party device um, and have the signal um, risk being disrupted. So we got that plugged in here. Now I'm gonna take you around to the actual, um, to the Mac itself. And also you might wanna pick up a, uh, an external hard drive depending on if you're 
uh, Mac has enough um, space, right? But uh, basically what you do, there's no additional software needed. We're gonna click uh, QuickTime. And if you don't have QuickTime, you can search for it up here with the magnifying glass because you want that to be open. All right, so what we're gonna do is go over here to File, and then New Movie Recording. Can you see that? Go ahead and click that, and there'll be something that pops up here, and you can see it actually is activating the um, camera on the screen. So we're gonna click this little arrow, did you see that? Next to the record button. And we wanna switch over to the AV to USB 2 for the video, for the camera, and the microphone. Can you see that? So we'll do that with both. And then you'll see here that the signal, give it just a second, automatically starts to pick up. And let me minimize that for you. Minimize that. I don't know what the deal is with that. Force the quit. All right. Now, if this appears choppy at all, okay, so it looks like the sound is, already, is converted as well. If this appears choppy at all, then your computer might not be fast enough um, in fact, I tried that on my Mac, old MacBook Pro, and it was pretty choppy. It didn't work very well. So I switched it over to a computer that's a little newer, still kind of old. Um, but you can tell it's very smooth. The lighting is great, etc. And you can turn up the volume and test it out. And when you're ready, and you can experiment, do a test sample before you run hours and hours worth of VHS through this and then find out that the, the sound didn't record correctly. Um, I think it can be muted playing back. I don't think, it, I think it'll actually transfer over the original sound as long as the microphone is selected here. So you can uh, have this play back in quiet without issue, I believe, so. Again, test that out first. And uh, when you're ready, we're gonna go ahead and click record like that. And then you can go get some work done or whatever you kind of want to do. You can see it does calculate the total number of megabytes. So uh, what are we at? About 10 megabytes for 20 seconds or so. Just less than. So not a huge file size. Um, to change the file size, we can click stop. Well, before we do that, I should have should have showed you that before. Um, you can play it back and make sure that it is it captured correctly. Okay, I hear sound, I see video, that's not choppy. So we're gonna go ahead and save that. So the idea would be after this completes running, you know, two to six hours of VHS per tape that you are able to um, uh, save this correctly into a digital format. So we're going to label that test and we'll put it on the desktop and then we'll close that out. Okay, and then you can see over here, there it is. All right, let's uh, open it up and make sure it plays back okay. There we go, we're good to go here. Now, before we transfer that over, um, I just, let's open up QuickTime again, because there was another setting. So new movie recording, right? And make sure that's on AV to USB, AV to USB. And then you can actually click high or maximum. So high is what you just saw. Maximum really does put out the megabytes, or I should say gigabytes. So let's take a look, make sure it's feeding through okay, and click record. And you can see here, we're already at, oops, for 10 seconds, 
we're at about 50 megabytes for 10 seconds. So you can compound the math there and suddenly you better indeed have yourself an external hard drive or something. But uh, I guess the quality should be better. I don't, I don't know if that's true. Um, whoops, I was recording so it wasn't able to switch like that. But you can play around with that and see the quality that you want. Okay, we'll cancel that one. Oops, delete that last one that we did. And here is the fun part. You can come on over to Google Photos and now that should transfer over quite nicely. Just make sure that works for you. There it is. Item is indeed uploaded. And let's come on down here. There it is. And it plays back on Google Photos without issue. Now, if you've got a really big file here, you might need to wait on Google Photos for it to process. It probably won't be ready instantly. This was a really small uh, file size, so that was uh, pretty fast. But that is how you do it. Uh, good luck to you. Hopefully this video has helped you out. If it has, make sure you click that like button and subscribe to the channel. I do all kinds of do-it-yourself projects. Uh, nothing is off limits around the house. Uh, the goal here is to make your house, your space, a better place. So thanks for being with me.